You're perfect. How could anybody say anything else? I love the rainbow flags. They indicate that the winds of change are a-blowing. Uh, I want to also thank all of those who are on stage with me because I think it's very important to put a religious face on this issue. That there are those religious people, many of, some of them up here, but many out there who believe that morality involves treating everyone equally. Uh, I know we have uh, several Unitarian churches, all of those in town, I think, and then some represented. What other churches do we have here today? St. William, would you, would you stand on the stage to represent your religious community? Who else? We have Epiphany? Come, please, thank you. If we keep it up, we'll get everybody up here. What else? Who else? Thank you. Come up. James Lee? Anyone else want to join us? Well, before I... Yes. Crescent Hill Baptist. Thank you so much. Yes. This is a moral as well as a political issue. Great. I do want to uh, remind you, if you haven't heard, before I get into my comments, uh, that at 4 o'clock today on Grinstead Avenue near Cave Hill Cemetery, there will be uh, an anti-war demonstration marking the deaths of uh, those 2,000-plus soldiers now uh, in Iraq. So uh, please, uh, if you can devote even more time today to civil expression, uh, please make it. I want to begin by recalling the words of Thomas Paine, that great 18th century liberator and lover of freedom who helped lay the liberal foundation of this great nation. These are the times that try our souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. Or in the words of a more contemporary prophet and true patriot, Michael Moore, dude, where is my country? Where did it go? What happened to our country? What happened to the American dream, the progressive dream, of a people struggling together to set aside our differences? to overcome our prejudices, to accept those with other ideas, other backgrounds, and other lifestyles in order to establish a more perfect union. What happened to the dream of freedom, equality, and justice awaiting the tired, poor, huddled masses yearning to breathe free? What happened to Dr. King's dream of equality universal brotherhood and sisterhood in a land where people are judged on the quality of their character alone. Whatever happened to what he called the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, words that promote the common good and general welfare for ourselves and our posterity, words that say all of us are created equal and have unalienable rights to pursue life, liberty, and happiness? What happened to leaders like President Woodrow Wilson, who established the League of Nations after World War I, and Franklin Roosevelt, who established the United Nations after World War II in their efforts to work beside the global community to finally bring about world peace? So unlike today's president, who has snubbed his nose at the United Nations, and the international community in order to promote his self-serving and unholy war. And while we're on that sub subject, whatever happened to free elections? What happened to letting every vote count without the interference from a partisan Supreme Court? When did the ruling elite and the mob mentality of the Christian Taliban replace the rule of law? What happened 
to the freedom to disagree with our government? What happened to freedom of speech and to the free press? What happened to the separation of church and state? What happened to a government that knows how to respond to national catastrophes? What happened? What happened? What happened? Like Michael Moore, I want to know, where is our country? Of course, I realize our nation has always been far from perfect. Many who signed our Constitution declaring equality for all were themselves the oppressors of slaves and of women and of the poor. So we've had to struggle together the past 200 years or so to fully live up to these highest of human principles. In the 1700s, we fought a revolution to gain our independence from foreign oppressors. In the 1800s, we fought a war amongst ourselves to abolish slavery. In the 1900s, we used civil disobedience and other kinds of public protest to earn women the right to vote, civil rights for minorities, and to end our country's brutal, unjust, and deadly participation in the Vietnam War. Now, at the dawn of a new century, we are still struggling to obtain true equality for all. African Americans and other minorities still live in poverty and are imprisoned and executed in disproportionate numbers to everyone else. Yes. Women in general still earn lesser salaries and occupy lesser positions at work than are available to men. Right. And now, as our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters and children struggle to be counted as equals, the powers that be for the first time in its enduring history threaten the very heart and spirit of our great constitution in their efforts to insert language that would definitively single out one group of people and deny them equal rights by forbidding marriage equality. As you know, several states, including Kentucky, have already adopted such ungodly and un-American laws. Strangely, these laws have come at a time in our history when many Americans claim to cast their votes in favor of less government interference in our lives. <laughs> Unfortunately, the powers that be seem to be having trouble deciphering the difference between when less government is needed and when more government is needed. <laughs> Indeed, the current administration got its start by running to big government to a partisan U.S. Supreme Court to tell the people of Florida it is somehow illegal and unconstitutional to count all of their votes. Right. When it comes to national elections, it seems, Bush and his cronies think more government is a good idea. But when it comes to regulating abusive corporations like Enron and the war profiteer Halliburton, they seem to prefer less government. Less government control over greedy corporations, more government control over the individual voter. When it came to listening to both CIA and FBI warnings that Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda were planning to use airplanes as weapons against the United States, Bush chose less government. When it comes to making it easier for the FBI to gather records about the medical histories, financial information, religious affiliations, and reading lists of private citizens under the so-called Patriot Act, the choice is more government. When it comes to forcing the religion of the Christian Taliban in our public schools, guised as the ludicrous pseudoscience intelligent design, the Bush administration favors more government. But when it comes to providing school children with a necessary number of teachers, along with adequate resources in schoolhouses, less government is all we get. Right. Similarly, turning over vital documents about White House corporate connections, documents per pertaining to its Supreme Court nominees, or taking a few moments of vacation time to explain to a grieving mother the reasons her son had to die in Iraq, there's more government control over the flow of information in the name of executive privilege and national security.